but the neighborhood of that distance r around p has no points of b. Contradiction. That's a contradiction. Excellent. All right. Any questions about this argument? You could actually have done it not by uh, contradiction if you wanted, right? That's the proof I had written down, but I like this better. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, Harris. Uh, she started the proof by s by uh, s uh, by taking the negation of what it is you're trying to show, which is there is some neighborhood with only finitely many points. And once you have those finitely many points, you take the minimum distance from P to that point. Yeah, so uh, you could have two things of the same distance, but uh, this, this uh, we don't really care which one we pick. R is still just the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, the other thing you probably have to be a little careful of is this, uh, the, the negation here, every neighborhood contains infinitely many points of P. Here you have there exists a neighborhood P with only finally many points. What if one of the points actually happens to be P? Well, then you just ignore it because you, th you, you ignore it and look at the minimum that's non-zero, and that neighborhood will not have any other points of E. Okay, so there's a, something to be a little careful with there. Other questions about this argument? Willie, are you happy with this? Nice, right? It confirms an intuition that you had. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, uh, let's uh, de define a few more terms. There's a lot of lot of terminology here today, but it's basic for everything that follows. So um, we have a concept for a set that uh, looks like the nose here. Okay, not not geometrically like the nose, but has the property that every point is an interior point. We call such a set open. A set E in a metric space X, I won't write that down, is open means, when I say that if, I just mean means, uh, every point of E is an interior point of E. Okay. So usually when you say interior point, you mean of that set you're in. Okay. So, uh, in that example, you can look at the nose of B is open. Why is it open? Well, every point's an interior point. Basically, an interior point, uh, an open set looks something like this. It's usually some set that doesn't have its, in some sense, doesn't have its boundary, right? It's the kind of picture you should have in your head, right? An open set. It, our nose here is, is, was like that, right? It's missing a little point, but isn't it true? No matter how close you get to this, this, this missing point, there's still a ball around every other point that's completely contained in the set? Yes. Okay. What if the nose, what if the nose had two nostrils, two missing points? Would it still be open? Yeah? Julian says yes, it would. Okay, it's kind of gross, but yes. It does have, it is open. Okay, excellent. Uh, yes. It could be missing, ooh, that's an interesting question. I mean, there are some configurations in which missing infinitely many points might be bad, right? I mean, I could miss, I could completely miss everything but a closed set. Or, oh, sorry, everything, can't use that term yet. Uh, I could, I, yeah, so with, with infinitely many missing points, you have to worry a little bit, right? But are there configurations where you could miss an infinitely many points and still be open? Yeah, a very interesting question. Can you think of a, can you, I'll let you guys 
I'll let you guys debate and discuss this. Can you miss an infinite number of points and still be open? How many people say yes? How many people say no? Okay, a lot of you saying yes. So uh, construct a, an example. Okay, great. Uh, probably most uh, useful would be to know in R, in the real line, uh, what the open sets look like. What do all the open sets look like? I know what one open set looks like. Um, well, actually, we haven't even said what some of the open sets are. What do they look like? Well, here's a question for you. Is the open ball open? <laughs> sure would be nice, otherwise it would be a bad word to use, right? Is the open ball open? More generally, if I take an interval, consider the interval a, b, which we normally write with parentheses, which means don't include the endpoints, so all x such that a is less than x less than b. Uh, is that open? It is? Yes, you're right. And for that reason, we often call this the open interval. Okay. Why is it open? Well, it's certainly true no matter which point you pick, there is a ball around it that's still contained inside this set. Agreed? Okay, that's the open, in the open interval. And then what do the other open sets look like? Well, any other open set I claim, we'll see this very soon, if you just take unions of open intervals, you'll get open sets. And those, those are basically the only kinds of open sets you can, you can have. Ooh, interesting. What about, the, what about in R, what about um, ooh, uh, the empty set? Is it open according to our definition? How many people think the empty set is open? How many people think it's not open? Okay, everybody vote. How many people think it's open? More people are convinced of this. Good. Most of you say it's open. Why is it open? It's open if every point of the empty set is an interior point of the empty set. Well, there are no points in the empty set. So this is vacuously true. That's what we say. It, it's in an empty way very true. It's true that every point is an interior point because there aren't any points. <laughs> Great. It's open. Good. What about uh, the subset R, the whole real line? Is that open? Yes, because you clearly can find an interval. Excellent. Okay, uh, we've defined the term open, but we have not defined the term closed. So let's do that. But before I define the term closed, let me caution you, very, very strongly caution you, this is a, a mistake people often make, a closed set is not, is not, the negation of an open set. In other words, because if a set's not open, it doesn't necessarily mean it's closed. Okay, even though you 